My name is Gordon Okafor Ross and I'm going to be using the X32 rack to uh, provide in-ear monitors for a band of eight musicians and to provide the main mix for a PA as well. We aren't a wealthy band but we've got a little bit of money. We've done some gigs that have resulted in us getting a little bit of money. So there are eight people in the band in total. Uh, we're called the Lotharios. Um, we're a kind of a joke band. This is us here. So you can see that we're kind of this. Is, we're the humans, not the uh, the uh, mannequins around us. But uh, this is one of the gigs we played. Not to mannequins, to other humans. But uh, Ben is on a lead vocal, so Ben has one output. It's a microphone, so he has one output. Charlotte is on a lead vocal and she has one microphone, so that's one output. Sean is on drums, but he also sings. So by drums, we only put the kick drum mic through the uh, PA. So the kick drum has a microphone in it and that is fed into the PA. And uh, the vocal also has a microphone in it because sometimes he sings backing vocals or lead vocals sometimes. So he has two outputs, so that makes four four outputs for the uh, for the band. Darren plays keyboards and he also sings some songs so he has two outputs. We only use a mono uh, output for his keyboard so that's one and we use a microphone for his vocals so that's two. Ian sometimes sings, sings and plays guitar. He always plays guitar. Um, well he always tries to play guitar and he always tries to sing. Well, he sometimes tries to sing, but uh, Ian has two outputs. One is for the guitar, one is for his microphone, for his vocal. Paul only plays guitar, but he wants his guitar to be in stereo. So therefore he has two outputs, a left and a right output. Martin only has one output. Martin plays bass, so he has one bass output. And Gordon, that's me. I have two a left and a right keyboard output. So I have that makes a total of 13 possible 13 inputs. 13 outputs from the band, 13 inputs to the mixing desk to the X32 rack. Now the X32 rack also has an omni mic plugged into its input to one of its channels so that everyone can hear each other and the audience when they're performing. So they're not completely divorced from the uh, gig. They just hear the dry signal that's coming in. So that's 14 possible inputs. The X32 rack has 16 possible inputs. And the 16 inputs are just syndicated here on this video uh, with uh, there. They're all on XLRs, but the XLRs can accept microphone inputs and they have separate switchable phantom power but they can also accept line level inputs as well. Uh, the switchable phantom power is indicated by the uh, LEDs. So on 16, I would just turn that one on just now. And uh, you can see that that has phantom power uh, to 16, but the others don't have. It's the LEDs just to the left of the XLRs that indicate whether phantom power is turned on. I'll turn it off again and uh, it comes with six auxiliary outputs, so those can be fed to headphones. So there are six balanced auxiliary jacks, uh, which are outputs from the mixing desk. And there are six matrix outputs on XLRs, so they're balanced as well. So there's six XLR outputs. I'm only referring to the six matrix outputs as outputs, because outputs seven and eight, which are matrix outputs, are always assigned to the main left and right outputs of the mixer. So they're always going to be feeding the PA. So that's what we mix the entire band to feed the PA sounds like. Sound like. Okay. Um, why am I using the X32 rack? Well, I looked around at a lot of things, a lot of uh, mixers to try and work out what was going to be the most useful for this. There are eight people in the Lotharios, so in this current incarnation of the Lotharios, 
when you look at the previous of uh, the photo, you'll see there's more. There's like ten, I think. But uh, there are eight people currently in the Tharios. Each person needs two headphone feeds, one for the left ear and one for the right ear. So they have to have two independent headphone feeds. So the fact that the X32 rack outputs 12, um, 12 outputs for the uh, headphones, that's only going to feed six people if you want to have stereo for them six uh, six people so there'll be one left one right six times two is uh, 12 so eight times two makes 16 headphone feeds so there's something wrong with the uh, maths here so the two lead vocalists they need to be on wireless headphones to move around because the lead vocalists they generally move all over the place so Char Charlie and uh, Ben they're going to be on uh, wireless headphones so they can move around and they're going to be on the same headphone feed. So Ben is going to be panned to the left slightly, Charlie's going to be panned to the right, but if they make any changes to their headphone uh, feeds, it's going to be the same change that they make for, every, for each of them. Okay. The two keyboard players, so me and Darren, we're going to share our headphone feeds also. So 16 with two for the lead vocals, that takes two off of them, so 14, and two off of them for the uh, shared headphone feeds for the uh, keyboard players, that makes 12. So it's a total of 12 headphone feeds. What I've got here is a rough idea of the stage setup, which is only just using the uh, X32 rack's outputs, not the inputs. So you can see that outputs one and two are used to feed both Ben and Charlie, both lead vocalists who are on microphones. So that's what feeds their uh, headphone feeds. Three and four, auxiliary three and four, are used to feed the headphone in-ear monitors of Sean, the drummer. Auxiliary five and six are used to feed the headphone uh, of uh, the bass player, Martin. Matrix 1 and 2 is used to feed uh, the headphones of uh, Ian, the guitarist. And Matrix 3 and 4 is used to feed the headphones of the guitarist Paul. Okay, And Matrix 5 and 6 is used to feed both keyboard uh, headphone mixes. So there, there you can see that we're sharing headphone mixes. Matrix 7 and Matrix 8 will feed both the PA speakers. So that's just the PA is being fed from Matrix 7 and Matrix 8, okay? Now, we've got 12 headphone feeds. One feeds a wireless stereo headphone transmitter with two wireless receivers that have headphone outputs. Um, we, bought the, we bought this Gear for Music Sub-Zero SZ-IM2R uh, we bought that, but you can buy anything you want to based on your budget. Okay, we bought this because it wasn't the cheapest thing that Gear for Music sell, but it was the cheapest that has um, has the functionality that we want to have. Okay, so it was pretty cheap, about a hundred and some two hundred pounds or something like that. But uh, we bought it with three receivers. There's only two singers, but in case one of them forgets to bring their receiver, there's always one in the case and uh, all we need is batteries to make that work. So um, in case one of the singers forgets the receiver, we bought three. Uh, if both of them forget, both singers forget the receiver, then one of them will have to go back home and get it or something will have to happen. But. Uh, uh, the other 10 feed 5 wired headphone amplifiers and we bought these Behringer uh, P2s because uh, they were really cheap but we got them for under 20 quid each I think but uh, they were the cheapest that we could find and they take XLR or uh, jack inputs and they have 3.5 millimeter um, headphone outputs and they just amplify so you've got a volume control on the top and they just amplify uh, the headphone signal so we left the headphone choice up to the band members 
everyone has different favourites, so everyone has uh, particular um, headphones that they want to use. They think headphones sound brilliant, um, but uh, the ones in the middle, the Shures, are the ones that I use, the SE215s, but uh, I think they're Bayer Dynamics on the left. But anyway, we c everyone has different favourites, so we've uh, just chosen the headphones to work in the in the the band members favour. So in total that makes just over a thousand pounds. Um, definitely the X32 rack is the most expensive item. We were able to justify that by selling our current mixer which is the PV XR1212 which is a powered mixer but we don't ever use the powered outputs because we have powered speakers for the PA. So it seemed redundant to have spent a lot of money on a powered mixer to just use the outputs that are uh, unpowered. So we just used the we just sold this, and we used put that money towards buying the X32 rack. It doesn't include cost of cables or connectors. So there's lots of cables and connectors that you need to connect your uh, P2 headphone amplifiers to your XLR outputs or jack outputs, balanced jack outputs of the X32 rack. But I think if you don't have at least a thousand pounds to spare, I don't see how this can be anything that you can think about doing. So you have to have a thousand pounds to even approach this, okay? The X32 rack mixer, it uses some software called X32 Edit, which I think is also available on Windows. I'm using a Mac computer, but the X32 Edit just makes it really easy to use the X32 rack. Uh, the MXQ iOS and Android softwares run on the on your phone. So they allow you to interf interact with the X32 rack to set up your own headphones. Okay, so the X32 edit software, which I've just included a picture of it, of one page of it here, um, is much more intuitive to use than the front panel of the X32 rack. That analogy of uh, painting a hallway through a letterbox of the front door. It just it seems so uh, difficult to use the front panel of the X32 rack, whereas the X -edit so X32 edit software is fantastic and it connects directly to the X rack and uh, you only need a router which plugs into the X rack. I'm not going to go into the router setup and everything like that. You can find a lot of that online. The MXQ software allows the musicians to alter the balance of what is sent to their headphones. So it allows them to uh, essentially balance. If they use the mixer, they can balance everything. So they have every uh, all 16 of the mix buses. And if they assign them to MCAs, which stands for Mix Control Association, then they can just, on the MCA page, turn up the drum and bass or vocals or guitars or keys, whatever you've assigned them to. But I've assigned them to that. And we're just using the bus that's assigned to the keyboards at the moment. I'll get into that a lot later. Um, the musician's headphones still need to come out of the mixer, not from their phone. So although they're using their phone to control the MXQ software, to control the uh, mix that they're getting from the mixer, they don't have their headphones coming out of their phone. They have their headphones still coming out of the mixer. This is just to remind you in terms of the setup. Uh, I've got outputs auxiliary one and two feeding the headphones of the two vocalists and so on. You can see everything from there. In the next presentation I'll go on to explain how to set up the X32 rack to generate headphone mixes for each musician or pair of musicians and then subsequently I'll explain how each musician can control that mix that they're hearing. Okay, thanks very much.